Viv. All right. How you been, man? I'm good. I'm good. You know, I'm just <laughs> school, staying safe during these times. Are know? they having you go in or are you doing it all from home? What's going on? So what my school does is you go in once a week. So oh, my okay. day is Wednesday. So the rest of the time it's online virtual. And then on Wednesdays, cool. I go into school and yeah. the classes, it's only about six people in a class, you know, and, oh, wow. you know, there's barely anybody in the school anyways, you know, so, yeah. you know, I feel safe when I'm going there, you know, everybody has their mask on and everything mm -hmm. like that. Take your temperature before you go in and all that. So everything oh, awesome. is safe. I feel safe. So, and I feel like I need it. I need it to like go into school because yeah. I'm at home all the time over the computer. I'll just like lose focus and stuff like that. So definitely was needed to go into school. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, my, uh, my wife's a teacher, mm -hmm. so they're having the same thing where she's elementary. But they have some kids that are at home, some kids oh, are, you know, yeah. doing over the computer. Yeah, so choice too, which is also cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's uh it's definitely an interesting time. Hopefully things clear going up. back to normal yeah. uh pretty soon. But yeah, um I this anymore. Oh, I know. Yeah, we haven't seen anybody. Yeah. Like nobody over here. So it's, it's just like and it's my senior year too in high school. Yeah. So. <sighs> Dude. Like, you know, prom and graduation, we don't know if that's a definite yet. You know, we don't know if they're going to try to work something out because, you know, the graduating class last year, they didn't have a prom, yeah. you know. Yeah, they, yeah, they no, got like nothing. a drive-in graduation kind of thing. At least it was something, but still, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want that to be, so. You know what's so bad is that last year, uh, we had a tornado go through Dallas and it destroyed uh, a high school. Oh, wow. So then COVID. So not only was their high school demolished, wow. They they you know they and they had to go to separate schools, so they lost their friends. So imagine that it's your senior year, and now you have you, you and your friends may not be going to the same friends, school together. New every, wow, that sucks, man. Twenty twenty is just the worst <laughs> year, I don't know how it could get any worse, honestly. Like, oh man. But you know what? What we're talking about today, I think, made 2020 a little bit awesomer. You know, yeah. it, when Wait, they dropped all that news and I was like, what? I was yeah, like, this is insane. The whole lineup of what's coming up. I'm super excited. Super, super excited for that. Dude, me too. Me too. And like I said, Charlie, uh, I talked to him about an hour ago. He had a thing come up. Mm -hmm. His um, his sister and his niece just came down from uh, Tennessee. Oh, okay. so they're over at their uh, his family's farm right now, so he okay. couldn't uh, he okay. couldn't make it out. But he uh, we we talked and we said the show must go on, you know, mm -hmm. show must go oh, on. And yeah. I talk about these topics all the time with Charlie. Like this yeah. is <laughs> I especially right now. Like I said right now, when you're at home and you know this yeah. is the perfect time for them to drop all this news. Yeah. And so you're a huge Marvel fan. Oh yes. So I knew when when they dropped all that news, I was I bet right you there, were like at the edge of my seat, like excited, waiting for like, is there any trailers that came out? Any mm -hmm. more news about any of them? You know. And even when I heard that we were going to be doing this today, I was super excited. I was like, oh, I guess I get to <laughs> talk about this stuff. Like, because normally, because you know, a lot of my friends, you know, they're into it. Like, we always, you know, go to the movies to watch the movies, but it's never like yeah. we sit down and actually like talk about, you know, like everything yeah. about it so it's cool to actually you know be able to sit there and talk about someone who kind of knows as much yeah as yeah like, and you know yeah, I, yeah. I live in nerdism so i mean you know <laughs> yeah that's so, the same thing with me yeah for yeah sure. so i so some of the shows I, again there were some that i think we already knew about like wandavision falcon and the winter yeah. soldier which looks awesome because they're finally going to do zemo correctly oh yeah with the with the with the mask and everything oh uh, yeah 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 uh-huh you know and with loki which looks insane you know, that you know show. what i think is just the craziest thing is that marvel is so smart and they plan everything yeah like everything just intertwines as you can see you know at the end i can't remember i think it was was it end game or one of them you see what's happening in the trailer of loki like it picks oh, yeah. up right where it left off kind of thing. Yeah. And that's one of the things I love about Marvel, which I feel like, you know, DC doesn't do as well. They don't mm -hmm. intertwine their movies as well and stuff. Like, and that's what I think why Marvel is winning so much. You know, not only do they have these lovable characters, yeah. they have everything inner, you know. Well, they have that Kevin Feige. 
That's yeah. the thing. You exactly. know, I, I'll say this star Wars and DC, they don't have a Kevin Feige, mm. you know, cause when Kevin Feige, when he took over Marvel and he created Iron Man, the film, what was at the very end of Iron Man? Nick uh, Fury. Oh yeah, Nick you Fury. Know? Everything was aligned. It was already lined up. It was already lined up. From the very beginning. Yeah. And that's what I love about Marvel. I mean, even at the end of um, uh, Incredible Hulk, mm-hmm. you see Tony Stark walk in. Yeah. And he's building up, you know, the Avengers and everything. The Avengers, yeah. And, and that's what I love. Like, how yeah. can you I love that? Like when you're watching and even like they have like the little cutscenes at, at after every credit and stuff like that mm-hmm. like just the little things like that will keep you know the marvel fans just like at the edge of the sea like oh my god yeah. so now you know you see this at the end of the movie it's like okay what's gonna come next mm-hmm. so that's what i love about it for sure well yeah and because i think with dc like with uh batman v superman and i i always credit the ultimate edition not the theatrical release because i actually really prefer the ultimate edition more just because it's good it cut the theatrical cut 15 minutes out of the movie oh wow and And so like you know the scene in the movie where superman's going to uh talk to congress and the wheelchair guy blows up and he's the only one left in city i feel like i know what you're talking about so uh-huh. people are like, how did he not know there was a bomb in there? The Ultimate Edition, which was part of the 15 minute they cut out of the film, explains that it was cased in lead, oh, which Superman can't see through. Can't see so I'm like, through. those little things would have made that movie yeah. better. And, you know, in that movie, you had the Flash appear and talk to Batman. You had the Flash, you, you know, you had Batman in the, you know, in the, where everything is just doomed. And with Justice League, they kind of just like threw all that out yeah and i think that's because you didn't have someone who was creating and star wars had the same problem with mm-hmm. last jedi and ride the skywalker there wasn't someone there wasn't that kevin feige who was building that universe Helps to keep it together yeah. kind of thing yeah and that's what all these shows are doing i mean uh and you know what and and i haven't looked the ones like the animated ones are doing like they're doing uh what if the what if that is super dope oh Man. That is like, like, cause, cause there it's just endless opportunity. Yeah. You can do anything with that. You can create yeah. any kind of story, any mm-hmm. kind of anything. And just imagine, you know, just the, the things that the fans come up with, you know what oh, I'm yeah. saying? They're different yeah. theories and conspiracies and different, you know, fan made stuff, this and that. So it's, that's just endless opportunity right there with the what if. Well, I can with already see that zombie together. Captain America. Yeah, that's dope. The zombie that, Captain America. That, that they, have, they uh, would ne- I don't know that I don't think it would ever make that movie but and I don't know if it would work live action maybe if it was an animated film like I'll say this DC kills it in their animated movies and with their animated stuff yeah kills it not, kills it I think Marvel it. needs to step it up because I think Marvel when it comes to their animated films mm-hmm. it's oh. not like that DC and I think yeah. if they did something like that an animated film in that style yeah I know what you mean I mean it would kick it out of the park, you know? And it, people remember Spider-Verse was Sony. That was mm-hmm. Sony. That wasn't yeah. MCU. That so wasn't you have to either. remember that when it comes yeah, to their animation. That, that That's probably one of my favorite movies, like top five just of all oh, yeah. time. The Spider-Verse, I mean, how can you not love that movie? That's like, like literally top five, one of my favorite movies mm-hmm. that I've ever watched. The animated, maybe top three, you know what I'm saying? Just cause yeah, I, it was, was just so well put together, I feel it like. It was. I mean, it was a great Spider-Man movie because I, I would say Spider-Man Two with Doc Ock, and Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man. That's my favorite Spider-Man movie just because I love Doc Ock so much. But I'll say that Spider-Verse and Tom Holland Spider-Man movies are the closest they've ever came to making a Spider-Man movie that's such a close adaptation of the comics. Of the comics, like yep. when you watch those movies, you're like, okay, yeah, this this is all Spider-Man. Like- like when you're watching, it's like you can like you really see them as that character. Like for yeah. Tom Holland, I think you know Tobey Maguire. He was one of my favorite Spider Mans, but I I really do enjoy the performance that Tom Holland has been doing so far. Yeah. I mean, he's doing an excellent job, I think, just portraying the you know teenage aspect of you know having being a superhero. I mean, I think mm-hmm. he's he's playing that beautifully. You know, just like beautiful. It's a dual role. Yeah, you know, I always say it's like Batman. You know, you had Michael Keaton, great Batman, great Bruce Wayne, mm-hmm. Val Kilmer, you know, and, and, and Clooney, they were, and even Bale, you know, they were good in one role, but 
But then they, when it came to the other the other side, they just didn't grasp it. And, I, and with uh, Tom Holland, he's great at both. Mm-hmm. You know, because you can complain that Tobey Maguire's Peter Parker made a little bit too whiny yeah. at times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like it was kind of like more stereotypical, I guess you could say, more nerdy ish. Not yeah, no, yeah. But and then I Andrew still, Garfield, I th- especially you know that second movie. Yeah wasn't uh the crown achievement of uh, I the spider-man I, films i really couldn't really get into those ones with the andrew garfield i, I thought they were all right he was an all right spider-man to me you know yeah. i feel like it worked for them for maybe the movie but it definitely wasn't my favorite i don't think for sure no no he's no it's it's it would it's when it comes to who plays spider-man tom holland tom number holland, one tom mcguire and then andrew garfield live action wise yeah yeah, uh, I, think, I think that's a lot of people's list. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I'm interested in seeing if MC, if if the MCU and Sony are going to team up to do like an animated Spider-Man series, hmm. you know, because that would I be interesting. Have, like the the like the cornier Disney one, you know. I think I know. the Disney yeah. one, but I mean, that's not what a lot of people want to see. Honestly, there's never been a really good Spider-Man CG. Uh, animated adaptation yeah. there was there was one that i think was like on mtv at mm-hmm. one point it was like really super cgi and it had neil patrick harris was spider-man I don't and it only lasted a few episodes wasn't yeah. it wasn't very good mm-hmm. you know it was it was kind of when they were trying to do a really different take on 3d animation you know and and, and whatnot and yeah I remember watching it because I was, you know, I love anything that was Spider Man, uh-huh. you know. Yeah. But it was like, ah, eh, you know, it, it it was okay. I wonder if, in what if, if Tom Holland might pop up as uh as Spider Man, you know. That'd be cool. You know, because be it's cool. it, I because I, he's technically he is part of the MCU. Yeah. So because he, I, I, when you look at that lineup, I mean, what's and what I think is great is that you're gonna see the final performance of Chadwick Bowman as black panther mm. and what if and he's with the guardians of the galaxies yeah, he becomes star lord yeah you know that's, that's so that cool. yeah I'm, I'm really interested in seeing uh you know that and and seeing what that show does and yeah they have a lot of ide- ideas already you know could that we saw in the trailer of yeah what you know it could be i think they had with the captain america it was um yes uh, peggy became peggy, captain yeah. america that, I think was, she, that was his love interest in- yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. so, so that, she, i think in the comics i think in one of the what if comics she becomes captain america but it's so funny that there's also a person called captain british mm-hmm. in the marvel universe too and she had yeah she had the the yeah. flag on the, okay and you know so what's interesting, that's a different adaptation of him as yeah well. that's and so in falcon falcon and the winter soldier uh they're doing like a captain america in there like it's some guy who the government like gives like uh, oh this is the new captain america oh. and it's played by uh wyatt russell kurt russell's son oh, okay so he's playing kind of like the guy who's taking over They're just for fake captain yeah just kind of like, you remember how captain america in, in first avenger how he would go to like the 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 army shows and everything yeah, yeah, it's yeah. kind of like that so, okay. like i think in the scene like he's at the football game you see like the guy dressed as captain america right oh, okay. that's what it's supposed to be so he's not fighting bad guys he's more yeah. just like just a symbol basically yeah so yeah like a, it's like a mascot now. kind of thing yeah yeah okay i see so yeah and then uh i think another one that really grabbed my attention was ironheart Oh yeah, you know, gonna be cool too. Is that gonna be live action or is that gonna be animated? Did they say? I was trying to, I couldn't figure that, it out. I do not know. Actually, I, I don't know. I feel like they probably would do an animated one though. I don't know. That's just what I think. This is yeah, my, what it might be. I, I feel like it could do good animated. I don't know. It depends it, on just what route they want to take, I guess. Because I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm glad just, they did this. I'm glad yeah. they went comic wise on this one because I for a while there they were saying oh that kid from spider-man or spider from iron man uh three mm-hmm. was gonna be the new iron man I'm like that kid i was like yeah ah. but he just like met him once like why would he yeah. be why would he be the new iron man uh-huh. you know and it was even weird when he showed up at tony stark's funeral and i was like oh wait that's, that's the kid from iron man three hanging out hey, there 
Wait, wait, wait. Now, wait. Now I'm kind of confused because maybe I don't know about this. Yeah. So, he, there's a kid in Iron Man 3 that he shows up again at the funeral? Yeah, yeah. So remember in Iron Man, have you seen Iron Man 3? Have you, has it been a while? Okay, so or? I watched, so. It's not good. First, it's, not, it's not the best one. Yeah. I, I have like, it. That, oh, is that the, the one with the, um, the guy with the rings? What's his name? Yes. Man, Man yes. Man That's the one where they messed up. Which is so funny. So they, the Mandarin is a joker. Mandarin, yeah. Of like to Batman, like Batman, Joker, Iron Man, you know, the Mandarin, that's, you know, kind of that uh-huh, dynamic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, and it was actually when they, when they wrote the first Iron Man, Ben Kingsley was originally thought to play the Mandarin. Mm-hmm. That was their, and it was so funny that Spider-Man four with Tobey Maguire, he was actually going to be the, the, uh, the vulture. Oh, so it, it, he's always kind of been in that Marvel world. Kind of but, been in the mix. And, yeah, uh, but so they originally had yeah, him in okay. mind to play the Mandarin, uh, like a cameo maybe in the first movie. It never happened. So when well, I was so excited when they said the Mandarin was going to be the villain in Spider-Man yeah. Three, and then it turned point. out he wasn't. Yeah, why'd they do that? Yeah, it it, it, it and what's so funny that the character that's the bad guy in the movie is actually a fake right yeah well and but he in the comic he's not a bad guy he's more he kind of like how he in, in the beginning of that movie he's kind of wimpy and mm-hmm. the girl that ends up like betraying tony stark and is working for the bad guy she's the actual bad character in the comic so they kind of switched it around a little bit oh okay and but yeah that kid who he meets when it's when the iron man suit crashes and the kid kind of helps him rebuild and everything he ends, he's in the funeral at the oh. very end. Oh, no lines or anything. He's just there. I don't get the, you know, all right, cool. But, but when I saw they're doing Iron Heart, I'm like, okay, good. I like this. Do yeah. this. Don't do yeah. whatever you were trying to do possibly yeah, yeah, with that. Yeah. Do this. This is much better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know, that makes the, more sense. Yeah. Sure. And, and so, I, but I like how they're, they're taking a lot of these more, n- new comics and making them into shows like miss marvel which is yeah, brand new I was just about to say that yeah i think that's super dope like the even the new characters that they're just now adding yeah. are already making appearance you know in the yeah. mc like that's super dope and plus you know miss marvel being such a like mm-hmm. like a you know monumental character you know oh, being yeah. brought to the mcu you know i think she's pakistani yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, you know adding that you know race aspect into the thing and just having great showing it that one you know a pakistani can make it into the marvel comics and yeah. now showing that they can you know it, you know you can make it into the mcu too you know it's like oh yeah it's so it, it's beautiful honestly to see you know and who knows she might get end up being in one of the movies you know exactly. i mean i heard that punisher and they're trying to get bring punisher back jessica jones mm. you know who knows they may pop up in in, okay. in movies as well so and that would be dope because i think that's what marvel is kind of trying to do too having the shows and the movies you know kind of yeah. align as well it's like you kind of maybe have to watch the movies to maybe understand what's going on you know in the movies and stuff mm-hmm. like that so that i think is really cool too but definitely and you know what I, I also, I think people don't understand is that a lot of these characters, you know, these Marvel characters are very like, they have a like, like well thought out backstories. Like people don't understand that oh, yeah. these characters like have emotion and meaning. And, and that's why I'm super excited for Moon Knight because I think he's oh, a yeah. super complex character. And there's like so much you can do with the Moon Knight, you know, series. I think, I think that's- Is that's Oscar Isaac's playing him, right? Isn't that who's playing him, Oscar? from uh from um force awakens and everything i think he's playing moonlight which is a funny I because he not was know that they casted i th- yeah. I, I think he is and I, and I think that he you know it's funny he played that futuristic spider-man at the uh at, uh was it the it was the mid credit scene of spider-verse oh okay so yeah he played he voiced that he character the voice actor okay okay that's cool. See, everybody's always like in the loop. I feel like, like, oh, yeah. like, like they, they, everybody's always in the loop kind of thing. But Moon Knight is definitely one. It's probably the one I'm most excited for, just because you know he has the multiple, you know, like uh, personalities and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So I think they're gonna be able to do a lot with that. And like, just his his whole character and personality is very interesting in itself. Like 
when he's fighting, you know, he doesn't dodge or anything like that. Like he mm-hmm. just takes the blows or anything like straight up. Like I think well, I like that. I like that they're introducing yeah. those characters because not a lot of people know them. And not a lot of people know about it. That's also another thing that I think is cool that they're they're continually they're continuing to introduce new mm-hmm. characters. It's not like they're gonna go on to Iron Man, you know, like five. Like they're gonna yeah, exactly introducing, you know Iron Heart to because it's a new generation. You know, they're not yeah. gonna stick around forever. That's not how things work. You know. Yeah, it's exactly. Like, yeah, and and it's a, it brings kind of a, a you know a youth into it. You know, like you're mm-hmm. revamping it you know yeah. you're not you're not just you know a race in the character yeah completely you know there's still like hawkeye you know yeah he has the hawkeye dog. is going to be in there but he's just passing the torch like in the comics passing the torch passing the torch yep that's exactly what's going which on which is genius you know yeah. and having jeremy renner there to do it uh-huh you know i think works great yeah and, sure. and that's and i think that's great that a lot of these big actors want to do these you know these shows because mm-hmm. you know I mean, could you think oh maybe i'm too i'm too big to do you know television yeah. or something like that they're like no let's let's do it yeah i mean i know if i got a call from marvel asking <laughs> you know, to be in that, and you, i was like oh yeah for sure you know well isn't yeah. don Cheadle's doing uh like a war machine show. oh yeah that, that's right they're also doing uh it's a what is it war suit armor wars armor wars yeah armor wars yeah. and i'm like yes do that yeah, that's dope too, do that Again, that's another another complex character that you know can easily have their own show. You know what I'm saying? That every character that may be a side character in one movie can you know can easily be you know the main character in, in another. Because and everybody- I can say an amazing recast. Mm. You know when Don Cheadle yeah. took over the role. I remember watching Iron Man and then seeing it, and I was like, wait. So they just out of nowhere just switched the cast and I had to figure out what happened with and, that. you know it can be tricky I like the, the new guy better yeah for sure it it, it it can be tricky you know if you're switching you know character but they did a great job I think yeah, Don I Cheadle think they... I, I love that scene in uh Civil War when uh um Stan Lee shows up is this Tony Stank yeah Tony Stank right here <laughs> Oh. <laughs> you know and you see the relationship that they have yeah and that's how it is yeah and i just think yeah i mean these two work so well together mm-hmm. and everything and so i'm yeah. excited that don Cheadle is you know going to do that show because i feel like you know we didn't get to see a lot of war machine mm-hmm. in, the, in the movies and he's such yeah. a big character in the comics that's what i'm saying it's a large that's backstory that. yeah you know and i think a lot of these characters work better on a show basis than they do in a film yeah, you know? true. You can grow them Definitely. out more in a show than you can. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. Movie. Just like um, what was it? Uh, Cloak and Dagger. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did that show? That sh- did that show get canceled? I don't. I'm not too sure. Did it? I think it might have actually. I mean, it that's that's such a great idea for a show too, and I think because. I think because not a lot of people maybe watch Freeform. Yeah, I don't think too many. You know, and I think you know they're not thinking. Oh, okay, Freeform. You know, they may not. Yeah. They they may not not come to their attention. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think that's why that show. Probably. Because Marvel, okay, like Agents of Shield, I watched. I think I I I watched all the way up to uh, Ghost Rider. Mm. Which I thought when they brought Ghost Rider into the show, I thought it worked really well. Mm Hmm. But I never watched that other show they did. The Eternals. Not the Eternals. Eternals. What was it called? I, I haven't really. It just didn't work. Yeah. You know, and it didn't oh, work. And it, with it's the big more... dog. I had the big dog. Oh, and... yeah, yeah. Eternals. Yeah, it was. Was Eternals. Eternals? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't yeah. remember what it was called. But anyway, it was. It, because that was there. Because at that time, you know, Disney had not acquired Fox or anything. And so yeah. they were not allowed to use the word mutant. Mm. you know so this was their kind of like oh well these are our mutants yeah and everything of course now they own it so they can do and yeah, now they can say whatever and yeah they can put it in there that they own it because now they could just do so much and they can tie everything together smoothly now oh yeah for sure and, you know it's, it's gonna be i was i was uh i was reading some news about possible casting for x-men mm. and one of the guys who was there thinking for magneto 
was the actor from Legion, that show Legion. He also played the Beast in, Be- in the live action Beauty and the Beast movie. Uh, they were thinking, oh, I, I think I know that guy. Okay. I yeah. So they were thinking him for Magneto. Mm-hmm. And then the actor who plays uh, Mock Gideon in Mandalorian as Professor Xavier. Say that other guy? You know, uh, the guy plays uh, Moff Gideon on Mandalorian, and he's also, like, in Breaking Bad. He's in everything. Breaking The main guy in Breaking Bad? No, no, no. He was the on the, the chicken restaurant, the mobster. See, I'm not good with What's names. His name? I'm, I'm good with, with What's faces. His name? Hold on. Let me see. Moth. But, yeah, he's – but they're saying that they're not the same age. That's the thing. That's uh, my, my problem is that they're not – the same age as two oh, actors. I'm thinking yeah. Magneto and Xavier would have to be a roughly the same age. Yeah, roughly, yeah. You know, and again, it's hard. How do you recast, you know, Patrick Stewart and Ian McClendon? How I'm do you, not gonna how do you lie, recast them? Fox did a great job with the casting of a lot of the characters. In oh, X-Men. yeah. So it's going to be really hard to kind of just recast them like, yeah. out of nowhere. You know, it's it's going to be tough. I mean, they, they, they even did a, I, I think they did a good job with the the young when they did the last three films those films weren't very good i didn't the last two even, i didn't watch the most recent one the phoenix i think i was. i can't i can't I didn't even watch it i can't i can't they ruined the phoenix story in last stand and they ruined the phoenix story in this movie wow and you can't do that again you can't just throw the phoenix story yeah. like there it goes but that's I feel a, like that's what Fox is doing. Did you ever watch that Fantastic Four movie that they did? The last one they did? Yeah, with uh, Michael B. Jordan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, yeah, I saw, I saw that one. So I was I had not seen it until Disney Plus had dropped it on there. Oh. And I was watching it, and the first 30 minutes of that movie, right, right when they get their – up to where they get their powers, mm-hmm. I, I was enjoying it. Mm-hmm. But then right after they get their powers, that's when I started to notice, okay, reshoot, wig, wig, reshoot, reshoot. You know, you could tell where the movie kind of changed after that. Uh And there was no, like, Dr. Doom, there was no purpose to him. At all. You know, it's like, I just want to go back home. Yeah. You know, and it was like, I like, okay you can see where they were building up this movie in the first 20 30 minutes and yeah then i was just, enjoying the beginning as well and they just kind of went yeah yeah like that and i'm thinking fantastic four because you know they're doing that movie now yeah now you know. i i know the mcu is gonna do a good job with, with well it's the director of spider-man homecoming so i, I mean did. I know it's going to be amazing because then they can introduce the Silver Surfer and Galactus and all. Oh, that. I know. <laughs> yeah. What they messed, what they, what they really messed up Galactus in uh, Fantastic Four: Rise of the Silver Surfer. Yeah, man, the yeah, giant cloud so monster. Loud. Oh, my and you do see the shape of his horns at one point in the clouds. I couldn't even notice. It, it, you have to. You literally, if you blink, you miss it. Yeah. See, they. That, need that's how it goes. Significant. Yeah. And. I, and I, I, you can watch that first one yeah, and still huge, enjoy it like you need to see a huge like guy you know what i'm saying Dude, like that's, that's what you need to see that like, would be awesome i, I, I would think he movie. should be the next bad guy i think that's going the forward in, the new, in phase yeah. four i think in phase four right now that's what i think mm-hmm. that's what, i think he should be the one especially when you if you're bringing in fantastic four that's who you need to introduce yeah you I know, think he will be the next bad guy. bad guy. You know, Thanos being the last big bad guy. Mm-hmm. I think Galactus is definitely going to be the next big bad guy because he was hard I can't to think beat. of anybody else. Yeah, I mean, who's who's like that powerful like that? I mean, yeah. there are, you know, a lot of powerful people, but yeah. still it's like, who's a better person for it? You know what I mean? Like there's no exactly. better for this role right now. Kind of, so. I wonder if they'll do another Avengers movie, like, you know, with mm-hmm. new Avengers in like, there. Cause I know for pretty yeah. sure, I, I don't think Chris Hemsworth is going anywhere. He loves playing Thor. I think mm-hmm. he will play Thor Forever. until he, forever. Yeah. 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 And I think the same thing with Tom Holland. I think they have just loved, and I think that's great. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that's they uh, they enjoy what they're doing. I think that always kind of like when when you know some actors are like, 
oh, I've, I've played this character too much. I don't want to play this. No, like, you have to like really love these characters. Yeah, he, look, yeah. At, look at look at Hugh, Jack, Hugh Jackman. Yeah. You know? Wolverine. He is, like, I couldn't see anybody else playing Wolverine, honestly. No. Like, I couldn't, and I think I would be mad seeing anybody else playing Wolverine. And it's so funny because he looks nothing like Wolverine in the comics, but he is Wolverine. Isn't that funny? Like, literally perfect for the Wolverine. I mean, it's I that uh, X two is still one of my top favorite Marvel movies mm. of all time. And when they're fighting in the mansion, and he just starts impaling guys with the claws and everything. Yeah. Did you ever play that game? It was uh, is when um, X Men Origins came out, and it was like the Rampage edition for like the Xbox, and it was like the super gory version of that game. The original Xbox or the 360? Uh, I think with 360, the 360. I, I, I think I know what, you, what game you're talking about here, but continue. And he would like you, you had a that version of the game was like more bloody, or like Wolverine would grab people and stick their heads up into like the helicopter, you know, propellers uh-huh. and everything. Just where he like he wore like a white tank top and just like, yes, romp- yes. I, I definitely had that game. Yeah, and see, that, that w- and it was funny that they did so, you know, the, the Wolverine movie, there's two different versions there's the wolverine that the, was in theaters and then they released on blu-ray a a special edition that's uh rated r oh, okay so there's a whole scene like when the the ninjas are like attacking him and they're throwing arrows which is straight from the wolverine comic and so they a lot of stuff they cut out that's why I, that's why studios you know for time wise they'll cut out so much stuff from a movie and then you're like well actually that with the best parts yeah. or push the plot <laughs> yeah. along and now the uh-huh. movie's like doesn't make any sense yeah yeah or it's less impacting you know yeah so but yeah, yeah I, kind of like sometimes a little key details is what you need in a scene or you know yeah and yeah and, and it's cut out and you're like okay well that's kind of uh, you know, like i said the whole thing was was uh, batman v superman yeah, they cut that whole line dialogue. Well, all oh, the wheelchairs encased in lead. Well, like duh. Then that explains why Superman just yeah, didn't. And then push you the, and then you fly hear the guy about it, You see it after you see the uncut version or whatever. And you're just like, well, why wasn't that in there? And that version is on HBO Max. Yeah, they took the theatrical one out and put the Ultimate Edition on there because yeah. they know, hey, now they know that people needed that to understand what was happening. And I think Marvel, you never see a director's cut of an MCU movie or an extended oh. cut. Of an MCU movie. Well, okay. Well, Deadpool was Fox, right? Yeah, Deadpool was oh, Fox. Okay, yeah, mind, yeah. Mind, mind. But anything like MCU, you don't yeah, see anything. You, know, you rarely see, yeah. Because they everything, even the stuff they cut, like you'll see deleted scenes. It's like no, I can no, see why they cut that. It doesn't go too far from what you actually see. Yeah. Yeah. It it, it does it doesn't doesn't take away from the plot. It doesn't uh, change anything. Yeah. You know, you, you're fine with it. And that's because those movies are so well done. Yeah, I, th- I just think the planning of it all. Like, I always wonder, like, I'm th- like, I always just, like, out of nowhere, I will randomly sit there and think, I'm like, man, like, I wonder what, like, movie they're filming right now. Like, they have to be mm-hmm. filming something right now. Because, I mean, you need a whole bunch of time to, you know, edit special effects, this, yeah. that, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I wonder what, they have to be filming at least a Marvel movie as we speak right now. Well, I, they, you know, they, okay, Definitely they're in pre-production for Spider-Man 3, uh-huh. uh, getting that ready. Um, you know what's so funny? The Black Widow is just sitting there. It's Black just sit- oh, yeah, Black Widow. True. It's just sitting there in a can or in a hard drive somewhere in, in, that, at Marvel right. Studios. They have Black Widow, and they have the trailer and everything. So I Yeah, and then COVID they came, and they're like, no. Now imagine this. Now, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. When they dropped Mulan on Disney+, Plus and they did the $30, Mm-hmm. I felt like, okay, that was smart for Disney because, you know, they still want to make their money. I just thought Mulan was the wrong movie for them to try that out with because I don't I think... I really like Mulan at all. I don't think yeah. a lot of people like Mulan at all. Yeah, and so, I think that was not the right movie for them right. to try it out with. Now, imagine if they did it with Black Widow. Now, if they did it with Black Widow, they, their numbers would have went up Yeah, way more. Way you know, more. I think that would have been the smarter move to go mm-hmm. with and i and, and i think with like with hbo max you know say oh we're gonna drop you know wonder woman on christmas uh which you know i'm you know i'll watch it yeah you yeah. know but i'm thinking you know they're gonna lose some money what if they did like twenty dollars you know mm-hmm. and you rent it you rent the movie for twenty dollars and you think about it how much is the movie ticket you know for two people 
plus yeah. popcorn. You know, you start adding stuff up. You know, the sure. twenty dollars doesn't seem like you know out of out of the box. You know, so but they're just gonna drop yeah. it on for free, and I'm like, well, let's see, let's see how that revenue does for them. But I kind of like what Disney did, just with the wrong movie to try it out with. Yeah, it was the, the wrong, wrong movie to, try to it do with. it with. I, I mean, like you have the perfect kind of setup right now. You know, yeah. everybody's at home. Mm-hmm. doing nothing watching movies all day streaming movies all day yeah right it was the perfect time to be releasing you know releasing movies because people will sit here and watch it at home and i'm yeah. sure they will pay for you know i'm afraid they didn't do that with onward they dropped it onto other you know platforms for you to rent and then dropped it on disney plus i wonder why they just didn't do the whole thing where they just put it on disney plus yeah i, wonder- I figure Almost a large majority of people own Disney Plus. I, I I I don't. It's very hard to find someone who isn't a fan of whatever pop culture or a family. Yeah. You know, if you have kids, it does not have Disney Plus to it. You know? I mean, it's basically like a Netflix. That's yeah. what it is, and it's your favorite Disney movies, Disney classics, new you know Marvel movies, you know Star Wars. So it's a, it's a big platform with a lot of entertainment on there. So. I mean, and it, I thought it was a great idea for them to even make the streaming, you know, yeah. platform because have was- you seen have you seen their Marvel section? What they did, I I, I love no, it. No, I did not. Okay, so they have Phase One, and it's all the movies that came out in Phase One in theatrical order. Oh. Phase Two, Phase Three, all. But then, oh wow! But then they have the MCU timeline, so it's Captain America, Captain Marvel. Iron Man, Iron Man. Whoa, so they do it so like you watch it in both ways. Yeah, okay. which is how. So, so I did that. Order that they were released. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I did that. I so uh, I did it before they had that timeline there. I went and said, you know what? I'm going to watch all the movies in order, and see if I understand uh, Infinity War and Endgame a little bit better. And at, and and movies mm-hmm. like Thor: The Dark World, Iron Man three, some movies that didn't really catch my eye the first time I saw them. So I'm watching them all together in chronological order, time wise. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, you know what? Thor: The Dark World makes a little bit more sense now with the Infinity Stones. Yeah. You know, and and when you watch them all back to back with each other, you're like, okay, okay, I understand I'm, everything. Yeah. You start seeing where Kevin Feige was building this universe and everything. Yeah. Like, wow, okay. This when is you watch them separate, amazing. it's like you're really watching it as its own movie, like yeah. by itself. You don't really think of all of the other ones that kind of join it all together. You know, I would say the one of the only MCU movies that you could watch and maybe not have seen the one that came right before it was Winter Soldier. You know, because they kind of explained oh, to you yeah. who, who Captain America is, Steve Rogers, who Bucky, what happened to Bucky. Yeah. And then it's such like a spy movie. And I think that's the, that was, in my opinion, that was like the first MCU movie that said, we're going to be a little bit different here. We're going to kick people off a boat. You know, we're going to go a little yeah. bit more adult, you know, with this. And you, you know, know, one thing, another thing that I also love about the MCU is how they take it from the comics to, to, to the from the comics to a little bit from the comics yeah to the MCU yeah like they still make it as if it could fit in this world like superheroes could actually mm-hmm. you know be in you know New York City or whatever like yeah even like because in the comics you know you have these guys with these flashy costumes you know bright mm-hmm. yellow bright green and the way that they kind of switch it over to the MCU to make it more, you know, realistic, but mm-hmm. still have, you know, there's still nuances to, so you can tell what character it is. And, yeah. You know, it still relates to the comic. You there's know. still, there's a little bit of purple yeah. and, you know, Hawkeye, mm-hmm. you know, they, 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 when you look at Thor, Thor, the armor on him, you know, it, yeah. it's very that's, much, that's Iron Man is part, almost, I think Iron Man is one of the most accurate superhero costumes in a movie Yes, because it's like, how can you take a big metal red and gold, you know, armor and make yeah. that look super cool and realistic? In- you know, they wanted to make that movie in the 90s originally. Can you imagine a oh, 90s yeah, Iron you can Man? imagine what the suit would look like. Oh, no. It would be rubber. Yeah. It would all have been rubber. Uh-huh. It would, you know, it would oh, have and been the, and the terrible. And the whole kind of design, too. The whole design would have been different as well, too. Yeah, it, 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 I don't think it would have had the same feel. At all. You know, it would it wouldn't it wouldn't have looked good. Yeah. Um, 
but I'll tell you right now, we were we had mentioned a little while ago, I am super excited for uh, Spider-Man 3. Oh, yeah. Super excited. I think that right now, the two most, for me, the two movies that I'm like super excited to see what they're going to do with Fantastic Four and Spider-Man 3. I mean, and it's a, a, they both the same director, yeah. you know? And with yeah. all that news coming out for Spider-Man what? 3, Jamie Foxx, Alfred Molina, you it's, know, I mean, it's it's crazy. It's insane. Yeah. So what what do you think that they're gonna do? Like, do you think they're gonna okay they're gonna to talk about you know Andrew Garfield and Tobey mm-hmm. Maguire making an appearance or something like? So what do you think? Okay. And and uh, I've thought about this a lot. Uh, I'm not saying I've written down paragraphs on this on mm-hmm. what I think could happen, but. Uh, so they so they said uh, Matt Murdock is rumored to you know be in this movie. And so what I think uh, very end of Far From Home, Mysterio reveals to everybody Peter Parker Spider Man, right? Mm-hmm. Peter Parker is in hiding. Matt Murdock is his lawyer defending Peter Parker, saying my client is not Spider Man. Mm-hmm. He is not Spider Man. So Parker Peter Parker now has to be in hiding. Because he, everyone thinks he's Spider Man. I think he's Spider Man. Okay. Something happens, and because of the things that have gone on with Thanos and what I think with Doctor Strange, I think we're going to see what we see in um, the Doctor Strange two movie yeah, is going to happen in this one, where time is going to open up. Yep. Somehow we're going to see Jamie Fox. It may maybe a different. You know, I don't think it's going to be the blue Electro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think they're going to do them a little different. They're going to do them more, more true to the comics. We'll mm-hmm. probably see a different looking Doc Ock. All these different villains from different Spider-Verses now coming I'm into the MCU. Of, uh, yeah. And I think we see Andrew Garfield Spider-Man first. And then later on, we see Tobey Maguire's show up. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of now they all have to team up together to fight almost like this Sinister Six that would be type like- thing. Cool is and <laughs> they you also know, hint at the Sinister Six as well at the end. Of yeah, the- and so I think that's going to be. And I think at the very end of the movie, they're going to have either Andrew Garfield or Tobey Maguire be in the Spider-Man outfit with a Peter Parker, Tom Holland, mm-hmm. to prove that he's not Spider-Man. Oh, that's smart. Wearing, yeah. if, I, it would probably make more sense if it was Andrew Garfield wearing the Tom Holland spider-man outfit yeah and then saying i am spider-man and i would I, if they do bring in Tobey mcguire they would have to bring up why he shoots webs out of his wrists mm. you yeah. know because that was just made up for that movie well i'm fine with it i don't have a problem with uh-huh. it but you know in the comics he, he didn't have he didn't shoot it out of his wrist he had the me- mechanism and the actual yeah so i would if he's in that movie i would love for them to bring that up but i also heard and this is a rumor that that Tobey Maguire might be in Doctor Strange 2 as Peter Parker Spider-Man. Oh. So like at, in the movie it's like he sees another Peter Parker that's not his Peter Parker. So maybe somehow you know that that's how they attach it cuz WandaVision is going to be attached to um uh Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange is going to be the new mentor to Spider-Man. Uh-huh. in uh spider-man 3 so then they're gonna have that connection okay so yeah so i'm thinking that that's how it's gonna be you mm-hmm. know that somehow it's gonna be sort of uh oh and i you know what i would love to see in spider-man 3 mm-hmm. scorpion yeah, scorpion I think add scorpion you know I, I i think that would work great at the end of um at the end of i think it was homecoming they showed yeah. him at, in the prison and he had the scorpion tattoo mm-hmm. on his neck, so I'm pretty sure that. But then we had the whole thing with Morbius, you know, because you see the vulture in the Morbius trailer. So I'm thinking, mm-hmm. okay, the vulture going to be involved somehow. You yeah. know, in the comics, there was another guy who took over the vulture, you mm-hmm. know, after Tomb. So I'm like, is maybe they're going to have another vulture you know, have using another the suit. Question. So you said you think that the Sinister Six might be involved. Yeah. Who do you think is going to be involved in the Sinister Six? Because there's there's a whole bunch of different ones with you know Craven, the Green Goblin. Okay, know. so Craven the Hunter. 
this is how I would love for them to introduce Craven the Hunter. After credits scene. Mm. You see Craven the Hunter maybe going to kind of like in like in Terminator, when Terminator goes to buy the guns and everything at the gun shop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. he's buying a weapon and he's mm-hmm. all and you see like the fur coat and everything. The lion. He goes, yeah. Oh, you doing uh are you doing some hunting? And he goes, Yeah. Or the what oh, what brings you here to town? Mm. I'm here to do some hunting. And or something like, you know, and then yeah, yeah. And you know who and you know who I think would be a great Craven the Hunter? Um Luke Evans. Who was Gaston in Beauty and the Beast? Okay. Hmm. I think he would be a very interesting Craven the Hunter. I have to. I have to. I'm again the faces. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think. I think it would be really interesting. I, you know, they were saying the hard sell was that John Cena might be Sandman. I'm like, oh man. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I saw. I saw like a concept art for that, and I was like, John Cena looks like he could be sandman i don't yes. know if it would be if he could play the sandman as, as much. because i'll say the sandman in spider-man 3 he i love thomas hayden church's portrayal of sandman in that movie mm-hmm. it was just it was a there was too many people in that movie yeah there were too many people and there wasn't enough credit to him big villains in that movie like I, and, exactly and i and one thing i don't like about the spider-man movies that and they and this continues on with Tom Holland. Mm. Every Spider-Man villain had the connection to Peter Parker. Have you not noticed that? Like, yes, like <laughs> some kind of way, like, <laughs> oh, I know Peter Parker too, kind of yeah, thing. And, and it's like if if you just be wary, if someone's close to Peter Parker, you're like that guy's gonna be a bad guy. Yeah, like, like that uh, guy's about to watch out Peter. <laughs> watch like, out for that. That say, guy's really like, close to Peter. <laughs> exactly keep an eye on him so i mean i, I always find that kind of humorous uh <laughs> that it's always someone peter knows or someone he's close to you know who i thought could have been a perfect craven like if you know dc didn't pick him up first uh the guy who plays um aquaman oh jason momoa yeah i thought i think like he could he would be a he would cool. he could be good well i mean look at Lawrence fishburne you know he's an ant-man but he's also in batman v superman yeah, there's there's some that play have played both sides. Oh, he would be a really good Craven Hunter because he has he's such a fun personality. Mm-hmm, which that, I think Craven has like mm-hmm. that sarcastic kind of humor. Yeah, kind of he definitely has a look for it for sure. And you gotta be built. You gotta be like really yeah, built. built. And everything you know, you need a pretty big dude. You know, muscular dude for that. So but I think I, if you were to introduce him like an end credit scene, uh huh, I think that and then say that's who's coming up next. I know for thing too, like, do you introduce Norman Osborn? You know, do you introduce mm-hmm. Harry Osborn in a way? Because I mean, th- another idea I had, which would be really awesome if they did, is that at the very end of um, Spider-Man Three, it cuts maybe you know a year later, a couple years later, and now Peter's going to college. Mm. You know, and maybe see that his new roommate, like he sees the sheet. And it's uh, H. Osborne, you know, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. You know, so I thought maybe they did something like that, yeah. you know, kind of introduce. Yeah, Green Goblin is one of my favorite villains. I love the Green Goblin. I, I, I do too. I, and I'm like, do you, you know, do you introduce a Norman Osborne mm-hmm. into Spider Man 3? And I'm thinking, because one of my initial ideas was like, what if he's the one kind of manipulating time and he's the one bringing in all the different spider-man villains from different universes like that would be interesting yeah, that would be interesting too and he's behind everything you know yeah, maybe maybe like so he many- maybe he brings out maybe he uh gets scorpion sentence you know commuted so he so he comes yeah, out and, and you know puts on the suit and becomes the scorpion and stuff like that Yeah, because you would have to bring in the thinker or mm-hmm. the tinker the tinker would have to come in because he built the suits yeah the tinker yeah yeah you know, so I mean, oh, yeah, so- they build the suits for all of them and stuff like that. And you think there will be a rhino? You think if they do it, you know, what's so funny. Paul Giamatti, his favorite Marvel, I saw an interview with him on Conan O'Brien years ago, years ago. And he's a huge Marvel fan, huge Spider Man fan. And his favorite character is the rhino. Mm. And he said years before he was in Spider Man, uh, Amazing Spider Man 2, that that was the one character he wanted to play. And then he ended up playing that character, Main Spider-Man 2, and it was done horrible. Yeah. Horrible. I think, and I, 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 I think Rhino would work great if done correctly. Yeah. 
Uh, and I didn't have a problem with the mechanical suit. I just thought it was a little bit too out there. And his, mm-hmm. his, I, I didn't like how they had him. I am the rhino. Oh, yeah. Too much like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Batman and Robin to me. Even with the with the mechanical suit, like I thought it was cool, but I don't know. Something about having that like that like rhino, like you know what I mean? Suit. Like how he had, but again, that's that's the thing with taking it from the comic, yeah, the comics to the MCU, making you, it more realistic. You want to know something interesting about Amazing Spider-Man 2 and that scene with the rhino? Mm-hmm. So um there was some there was some deal they had to make um with somebody i don't remember who it was um sony and fox there was someone there i don't don't know if it was they were trying to make a movie with hugh jackman and things were kind of going Mm. um i I don't remember what i don't remember what it was but anyway so it's a very the end credit scene of amazing spider-man 2 is the Vietnam scene from um, Days of Future Past. That's the one with the apocalypse, right? Uh, no, no, no. That's the one where um, uh, they go back through time and everything. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. I know that one. So how- the hey, scene yeah. where Mystique goes to Vietnam and, and gets out some people, that was mm-hmm. the after credit scene in Spider-Man and the Amazing Spider-Man 2. And the reason why is because they had to make some deal, I think, because Hugh Jackman was making a movie for Sony and 20th Century Fox at the time. Mm-hmm. And so they said, well, we'll let, you know, Hugh Jackman, you know, do this, this, and this, but you have to play a, you know, an after credit scene at the end of your movie from X-Men. They said, okay. And that Rhino scene where Peter Parker shows up to save the kid yeah. and, and you see the hubcap yeah. Kid, that was the end credit scene originally oh. for so the that's movie. what it was supposed to be that so the movie was supposed to end with with peter parker mm. was like at the cemetery thinking about everything go to your bed sorry this is my dog watch out small oh no it's fine it's fine yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that and i think he was like you know the news pop you know something pops up and he's like i gotta be spider-man and that's how the movie was supposed to end credits end credit scene the rhino shows up hubcap Spider-Man will return and so and so. That was the original idea. And, and if also, you watch the movie, you can kind of see. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I I can uh, I can see that. And with the Spider-Man, and with Spider-Man, I mean Spider-Man's been all around. He was in the Avengers, you know. In oh the yeah. X-Men, so like, you know, in the Fantastic Four, like he's been in like all those kind of groups so he can easily make a way in any one yeah. of those movies you know what i mean i i, yeah, I saw a poster someone did had deadpool spider-man and daredevil together mm-hmm. and they were like they were like the reds unite or something like that yeah. and because you know they're gonna do a deadpool 3 oh i didn't know that yeah they're gonna do deadpool 3 and it's probably gonna be at, hopefully it's rated R. I think that it would kind of be weird for them to do PG thirteen after doing two rated R movies. Two rated R movies. It'd be kind of you know it's kind of like when they did Die Hard four and it was rated PG thirteen and I'm like well oh it was rated R but okay <laughs> but uh, I wonder you know Ryan Reynolds talked about maybe doing like a movie where he goes and just kills off all the 20th Century Fox. <laughs> Marvel care Marvel characters. That and that would be such a Deadpool like thing to happen. I mean, you would have to mention MCU. Yeah. You know, I mean, it it would ha- it has to be meta, in a way. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I I trust Ryan Reynolds. You know, I I trust Ryan Reynolds. I trust the people who are making the Deadpool mo- movies now. Besides mm-hmm. the people who were in control of Deadpool and X Men Origins. Yeah. You know. I saw an interview with the creator of Deadpool and he talked about making that movie and he said, and he slapped down a drawing of Deadpool and said, please tell me you're going to put the mask on him. Please tell me, Oh, well, we're going to go in a different direction. We're going to go in a different direction with Deadpool. And we all saw what happened with Deadpool. <laughs> yeah. And I think Origins. Ryan Reynolds, he's a perfect Deadpool. Oh yeah. He's yeah. Like, I mean, he's great. Yeah. I mean, he, he, you know, and, and, uh, uh he was a not a great green lantern mm, he was too right. sarcastic for green yeah. lantern 
you know? Yeah, I didn't like it at Green Lantern. Did you hear that? Did you hear that they're gonna do uh guy? They're gonna do the original Green Lantern. They're gonna go back to the OG, like oh. before before out guy something or another. I can't remember his name. I think that, I, the guy he kind of has like the button up with the cut off sleeve. Yeah, they're gonna go uh, back and do him. I'm like, what? just do John Stewart like everybody wants. Like just uh-huh. do him. You know, yeah. that's who. Ev- that's who uh, I grew up with. Uh-huh. watching on justice league you know just do john stewart yeah <laughs> yeah i mean you know i mean yeah that would be cool too and he's cooler either, either one either one would be you know cool it just has to be better than the one that they made to be honest because yeah it was, i didn't like that green lantern movie at all it was it was funny that the guy who plays uh who's the bad guy in green lantern what's his name the guy in the yellow uh sinestro sinestro Mm-hmm. I love the actor who they cast as Sinestro. I'm like, okay, yeah, I like the way just he looks. like Sinestro. Just yeah, like he him. looks just like Sinestro. And I think they even made like the suit look the suits I didn't I didn't mind as much. I think no. a lot of people didn't it like made them. sense. It, they're I all made like out of energy. Sense. Like it has and it's like flowing with energy. And it's yeah. not really like a costume. It's a something that gets produced when the ring is activated or yeah. you know, it's not like a costume like in the comics and you know so funny the guy who plays the alien that how jordan gets the ring from mm-hmm. that's the same actor who plays Django fett and boba fett now in the mandalorian and he also plays aquaman's dad in aquaman wow yeah what the heck yeah <laughs> That's crazy. That's the same actor and everything. That's the same Man, actor. I saw that movie in theaters, by the way, Green Lantern. I saw it for free in 3D. Was well, not a very good 3D movie because uh, it wasn't really 3D. I saw it for I saw that for free. Mm. Uh, I got a movie pass and I walked out and I was like, for a movie that was free, it was okay. If you had paid for it, you would. Yeah, paid for it. <laughs> yeah. Like, I paid to see Spider Man three when it came yeah. out. I went and saw Spider-Man 3 in theaters when it came out. And I remember sitting there with my buddies halfway through the movie. We were at AMC and I'm like, this movie is terrible. <laughs> Especially when Peter Parker is dancing like this and everything. I was just like, oh man, this movie is awful. Yeah. And I felt the same way actually when I saw uh, Iron Man 3. With, I, it wasn't that it was I, when, when it turned out the man, when uh, the... Um, the Mandarin wasn't the Mandarin. Mm-hmm. Right when I realized, I was like, "Oh, That's okay." Cool. And even the lava monsters were bothering me too because they totally messed up what that was. Like in the comics, it doesn't turn you into a lava monster and everything. Mm-hmm. It's what helps Iron Man get all his. Uh, he used he injects himself with that stuff so that way his armor can go onto him. But they didn't really explain how yeah. his armor is get, getting onto his body. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Yeah, and so they re- they really kind of just took like oh, okay, that's from the comic, that's from the comic, that's from the comics, mm-hmm. and it's kind of a weird MCU movie because it really honestly it doesn't has it has no connection really. I think the only connection it has to the other mcu movies it's a it's right after avengers so he's like freaking out about the space cloud when he mm-hmm. went into space and everything but everything else about that movies you know has no connection really like you could skip you could skip iron man 3 and it would do yeah it wouldn't like, do anything the coolest part of that movie was having all of the suits i think that's that's yeah. the one yeah yeah that yeah they all the, the suits came part. together they had like all the suits coming at the end it was so many different kinds of, that did different things that was probably the coolest part of the whole movie yeah i i agree and it's a great director same guy who did like lethal weapon and you know he wrote lethal weapon and he wrote i just think they took the wrong approach on it on the yeah. take of the the mandarin and and stuff like that i think they could have did it way way cooler they made it too much of a solo movie Mm, you know it's like winter soldier can be its own movie but it also you know that this is a marvel movie that connects to the other film everything else yeah yeah yeah. and i think iron man 3 just didn't uh it just didn't have that like you like that you could skip it and it would not you you would not you could skip that movie and just go on and it would not affect the whole infinity stone or anything like that at all because i mean it really was just another movie that just kind of told you about a story what happened 
between Iron Man and and Mandarin. Really. Yeah, yeah. And, well, and then what I loved is that they retconned it and had Ben Kingsley in an inter- in a, in a in one of those uh, Marvel one shots, mm-hmm. and a reporter goes to interview Trevor or whatever his name was. And it turns out that the Mandarin really does exist, and he's mad that he took his persona, and then they oh. kidnap him, and now they're doing that Ten Rings movie with the real Mandarin. I'm like, okay, if they do it right, if they do it right, I because if you look at um, the bad guy from Iron Man, he has a ring, the ten, uh-huh. he has a ten ring. If you look at the the arms guy from uh, Iron Man Two, he also has a ten ring mm. as well, and so I felt so like they were building more. it up to that, and then oh, it kind of just see, went. And even when you think that you know the Marvel may not be planning something, they probably you know had that plan that they are going to have the real Mandarin, you know, with all ten rings. Because I mean, the Mandarin is a cool character too. Oh yeah, every ring being able to do something different. You yeah. know, there's a lot you can do with that. So I think maybe maybe they knew that they were wasting potential of a character to then bring them back later on. And I, I, and I will say Ben Kingsley is funny. It, mm. it, and when you see his character, his character is humorous. Like, oh, they gave me drugs and they gave <laughs> me money and they gave me a boat. And he starts <laughs> falling asleep. I'm like, did you just, and Tony Stark goes, did you just doze off? <laughs> you just doze off the conversation you just doze <laughs> yeah and so you know i i uh i, I like those little moments yeah in marvel movies like the like in um in um what was it uh, infinity war when iron man and spider-man meet the guardians and everything mm-hmm. it's like tell them about the dance off that saved the universe you mean like mm-hmm. oh you mean like in uh in um Footloose? Yes, just like Footloose. Oh. <laughs> Is it still the greatest movie in the world? It never was. <laughs> uh, yeah. so I like when they do those little quips and stuff like that. Yeah. In the movies. And and the interactions between each character is also, you know, pretty unique in itself because it's like, you know, like in the comic, like I feel like, I don't know, a lot of people think that like all superheroes like know each other or something or like yeah. you know it's like these are supposed to be like real people who happen to have superpowers who happen to be super yeah. superheroes so it's like their interactions are still you know one that can be you know portrayed like on tv you know what i mean what was it like i love when uh when tony stark meets D- dr strange it's mm-hmm. like who's this magic you know the I, yeah, you know, we got a magician and it's all like it magic is. versus science kind of conflict <laughs> now in this game, basically. It, it, and oh, you know what? I heard that in What If they might do a switch where With Doctor Strange is Iron Man, Iron Man is Doctor Strange. Oh, that would be dope. That would be dope. Yeah, See, that, and, and that's that why What If is going to be probably one of my favorites. It's going to end up being one of my favorites just because of the possibilities. Like, oh, there's yeah. what you can do with that. And they're probably going to come up with crazy you know, stories, different theories and stuff like that. I'm, I'm, that one's going to be, and I'm so glad it's animated, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and that they got, you know, the actors to come in and do the voices. The voices too. So it still feels like you're watching the same thing. And, and again, that's another smart thing that they're doing. Oh yeah. Well, and and cause you know why? Because MCU has been really good to them. Mm-hmm. You look at Star Wars, especially the last cast. I'll be honest with you, Lucasfilm and Disney really did not treat them very well. Mm. You know, it didn't really give them a lot of their fair shake, in, in my opinion, I think. And I think that's why a lot of them don't want to come back. Like, they, I don't know, if they, Lego just did a holiday special mm-hmm. on Disney Plus, and it's actually really good. Oh, <laughs> and I'm like, is this canon? Like, like Finn is like force sensitive. Like you kind of knew, that, like at the end of Last Jedi, you kind of knew that Finn was. Uh-huh. But a lot of those actors, they don't want to come back and even voice. I think the only one that came back and voiced uh, their character was the um, the fighter pilot that like like kissed Finn in the Last Jedi. Mm. She was the only one that came back to voice her own character like all the other ones were just uh voice actors that uh-huh. do like in the video games that voice the characters in the video games and and i everything. wonder like what kind of happened for them to make that decision i think because their characters weren't very fleshed out very well mm-hmm. you know i think finn especially when you look at his character in last jedi 
he was really trying to push the side mm. a lot. Yeah. And and I, I I think that again, you know, they don't have a Kevin Feige there. Mm. And I think now when you look at something like The Mandalorian and you have John Favreau and especially who I think should be the person who runs Lucasfilm, Dave Filoni. Mm. You know, Dave Filoni, you know, he's the man behind Clone Wars, Rebels. You know, he's pretty much like the heir apparent to George Lucas. Mm -hmm. Now that he's uh, creating a majority of these Disney Plus Star Wars series, I mean, you know, with like I said, with Marvel, you have so much history, right? Mm -hmm. And what they when Lucas filmed, they were like, well, you know, unlike other, unlike other companies, we don't have any any history to you know, put, you know, to get, get you know take take stuff from thinking. Mm-hmm. there's legacy yeah look at the books exactly. you know i mean so you don't go off of yeah it's like there's so much stuff and so yeah. I, that's why i think marvel compared to dc star wars you know they they know how to care for their for their characters and their mm-hmm. product and they know how to produce really good things and they know how to use what they have yeah like, Everything you need is honestly they're like okay, so I have these encyclopedias, right? It's like there you a, go. I have a Marvel Marvel encyclopedia. My dad had got this for me when I was like, like maybe seven, six or seven. Yeah. And uh, you know, I always, I, I've always, you know, just periodically, you know, because it's like almost every character. Oh, I just opened the page and it was Moon Knight right here. There you and go. You know, pretty good quality stuff. You know, it's a pretty good quality book and just to see like I'm reading all these backstories of all these different characters yeah. there's like so much that I I didn't know about and it's yeah. like even before uh you know this I was just taking a look and I'm finding out new things about new characters and all different types like different groups like and the years that they were made and where they're from and all these different types of things and it's like look at so Guardians much. look at Guardians of the Galaxy yeah you don't know you, a large majority of people had no idea who Guardian Galaxy no was. No clue before the movie. Great movie. I saw it twice in theaters. One of my twice. favorite and now they're like one of my favorite like groups, like characters. Oh like, yeah. Oh, and they're doing a holiday special. Exactly. Written and, and directed by James Gunn. Terrific. Exactly. What I'll say is I am excited to see his Suicide Squad. I, I am interested in seeing how his Suicide Squad movie does. I, I, I am interested in that. If it's James think, Gunn, I'm like, okay. Did what, you what, like what, the first Suicide Squad? uh okay i do own it i own the the one that has the extended edition i've only seen it once uh-huh uh i like will smith, will smith i think that i think it was uh for him i think it was a better choice than going back and doing independence day resurgence mm. at that time now i think they, were, they should, probably should have pushed and have been independent day resurgence so will smith was more available to do it but if i were will smith i would have taken Deadpool or, or a Deadshot because Deadshot is a more inter- interesting character than yeah. you know than what he played in Independence Day. You know, mm-hmm. revisiting that character, I liked him. Margot Robbie, of course, terrific. Harley Quinn. Yeah, Harley Quinn. Um, I even like Captain Boomerang. Okay. And so you had those characters were really well done. Villain was terrible. Should have been the Joker from the very beginning. Yeah. Joker should have been the bad guy. Terrible Joker. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm fine with Jared Leto being the Joker. I just don't like how he looks as yeah, the Joker. Like, I don't like, I mean, they tried to like pimp him out. Like, yeah, like, yeah. like, a, like a gangster kind of like, I mean. And I, like, I, I get it because that director, if you look at that director's movies, like he did the, the, some of the movies he's done, mm-hmm. it makes sense why he would make the Joker that way. Because he's he, that's kind of his style of directing. I, love, oh, see, I didn't know that, but. Yeah, so that, but it, I don't see him fighting a Ben Affleck Batman. Yeah. You know, it, it, yeah. I just don't see it. It's like with someone so iconic as the Joker, it's like you can't really steer too far from the original because, I mean, one, yeah. the fans are not going to like that at all. I mean, well, and at, at Joaquin Phoenix, I haven't seen Joker, mm-hmm. but again, I just don't feel like that's, you know, it, it's probably a really good movie. The newer one, right? I just don't know if I see that as Joker, yeah. though. Like, everybody was saying how good it was, how this and that. I'm just like, yeah. But I look at it, I'm like, is this even the Joker, though? Yeah. Like, really? Like, this, to me, this looks like a, a clown. Like, yeah, it, it doesn't feel like Joker. Yeah. It, it doesn't feel like Joker. And I think, you know, when you have Jack Nicholson, 
you know, Heath Ledger, Mark Hamill, you know, people like that who voice and act the Joker. Like, okay, that's the Joker. Yeah. I can that find the Batman. That he works. The best. And I think with with Suicide Squad, you had the wrong villain. Mm-hmm. You had characters that served no purpose, like like Slipknot. Yeah. Dies. His head. They kill him. No point in having that character too. there. It wasn't even like. And and he was in the trailer too. Like as yeah. As as and I like that actor. I really <laughs> like that actor too. And they gave him the shaft, and I was like, okay. And you know there was Killer Croc was fine. Yeah. You know he was fine. You know Diablo was fine. It's just it didn't have a very good plot. Out, and with the monster, like the weird monster people, yeah, I just it was it's just another one that again, a great group of characters, the suicide squad, you know, yeah. a good story, and just another time that I feel like DC didn't, you know, they didn't use what they had correctly, yeah, they didn't. And, I mean, and you had, and you had, you had, had a this, great cast, you had a fantastic had cast, so many cool characters as well. And and I and I still never understand why there's like six Batman movies, but like there's no yeah. other new DC characters, you know, being introduced. You know, it was it, weird. Fl- Flash could be such an interesting movie because it could change the DCU so much. Mm-hmm. You know, and what I'm super excited for is that Michael Keaton is coming back and kind of being the Tony Stark of the DCU movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's a great idea. I'm super excited to see Michael Keaton return as mm-hmm. as Batman. Um, I would like to see, yeah, I mean, I would like to see them do more, you know, other characters. Yeah, there's so there's so many there's so many others. I mean, again, like, why is it taking so long to do a Flash movie? Exactly. You know, like, why Flash have they gone through five directors? Exactly. You know, it, it doesn't make it it doesn't make any sense to me. Mm-hmm. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not really all too excited about the new Batman movie. Me neither. I'm not excited for it. Because it's like, how many, okay, so how many times are you going to, like, restart? It's like, it's getting, yeah. it's like, how many times are you going to get it, Are you gonna, like, how many times does it take for you to get it right, kind of thing? I don't think it's necessary. I, I honestly, I thought Ben Affleck was a fine Batman. Mm, yeah. You know, I don't. I now they got the dude from Twilight. I think. Yeah, him, right? and my only problem is I know apparently Rob Patterson from uh, people have seen different movies he's been in. Apparently, they really like him. Mm. I've never. To me, he always seems kind of lost in every role he's in. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I think I could see that because I just saw him in this movie Tenet. Tenet, I think. Was it good? It the movie see I, I never I didn't finish it because it's a really long movie. Yeah, and, yeah. And it seems actually really interesting so far because the concept is is quite interesting and it's like a cool one to try to like you want to see like where that like because it's like the bullets go in reverse or something like that. But it's like yeah. you have to watch the whole movie to truly like understand it. What do you think of Nolan? Thing. What do you think of Nolan? Because I'll tell you this: a couple of years ago, me and Charlie were covering a film festival, and we were asking. Uh, I think it may have been high, maybe high school kids, maybe right, maybe right into college, mm-hmm. and we're like, well, "Who's your favorite director?" And they said Christopher Nolan. Mm. What do you think of of? Uh, I mean, like Inception. I, I I like Inception. I do not like Interstellar. I I thought it was too out there for me. Okay. So I know. So wait, is th- this is the guy who directs Tenant? This is Tenant, yeah, the same okay. director. And he did like so, the Batman trilogy and everything. Yeah. So, and then he directed Inception. Yes. And that's the one where it's like you go into a dream world. Kind the of dream thing. within a dream within a dream. dream right? Okay. And I'll tell you right now, so, I saw that in theaters, and I was I didn't walk. I walked in with like, eh, let's see, and I was like, wow, this movie actually pretty good. Yeah, I remember. So I remember seeing that movie, but a, a long time ago. Like it's kind of hard for me to remember a lot of it, but I, I remember some of it. I don't even know if I ever finished it, but I could tell that even with that, like the ideas, you know, he has. He's or, a visionary. You know, yeah, the vision. Yeah, I mean, it's like you have these ideas, and it's so out there. It's so different from anything that you've seen. So it's like to work with that is pretty amazing. I mean, because I know I couldn't 
it, it would be hard for me to try to understand that and then like have to direct it and try to you know, explain so it and he, stuff. Like, he's such a versatile awesome. director too. Because yeah. he did Memento with Christian Bale about a guy with a drug addict. Christian Bale has, like lost a ton of weight. Mm-hmm. Oh, and okay. then, I know about that, that weight. Or line. the machine. Or no. And then he did, um, they did the Batman trilogy. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I like. I like all three. I even like Dark Knight Rises. Mm-hmm. You know, I think honestly, I thought Bane was a more scarier bad guy than the Joker. Oh yeah, I like the I like you know? the with Bane. Yeah, I thought Bane was a much more scarier bad guy than the Joker. Um, <laughs> he did a movie with Robin Williams and um, Al Pacino. It was like a murder mystery one that he did. Uh, what are they called? I have it over here somewhere. It starts with an M somewhere over here okay but i have it somewhere over there but um where is it it's over there somewhere but yeah he did a movie with them and it was kind of a kill uh, uh, a thriller okay and he did that and of course then he did the christian bale hugh jackman one with like time travel and everything mm-hmm. and it's it's interesting his last movies have been really kind of in your mind which is you know inception um Interstellar, which I, I couldn't get into Interstellar. I actually like... Wait, what is Interstellar? I can't... Matthew McConaughey is like in the future and crops are dying and so he, he's a former astronaut and they just send him into space and then oh, somehow he oh, ends up being like in a black hole and he's like in a... I don't understand like where he's at and everything. It, it was kind of confusing for me to understand like, okay, he's in time and he his daughter... In the beginning of the movie, says she hears something, and then you find out that it's him talk. She he's talking to her. Yeah, I think. I, yeah, I know. Or something. And it was yeah. just too, it was too much. It was too much for me. But it was and that was the same year that that um, that other movie came out with Sandra Bullock and George Clooney were there in space. I can't remember what it's called now. And it just like uh, there's an accident. I can't remember what it's called. The Martian. No, I can't remember what I can't remember what it's called now. But um, and now and I I preferred that one too. The Martian's a great movie, by the way. No, oh, yeah, I like the Martian. Martian's a great movie. I saw I saw that on a plane to DC. I had it on my tablet, and I, oh. I, I had not seen it. It was just sitting there. I had I had got it for free, and it was just sitting in my uh, my library. I like, okay, I'm gonna watch it. Great movie. No, nah, that was a good movie. I remember watching movie. that. I think I watched that with my mom and dad. I think that was a great movie. Such a funny funny and really drama all together and film and i was like man this is a, this is really good yeah, and the cast really, is really good yeah it was really really good i i i really liked it um yeah. but There's a lot of interesting topics about i mean a lot of interesting movies about like space oh yeah like and i was just watching this one movie um it's called greenland it's not really about space but about like meteors and like comets like oh wow on earth oh my gosh that that movie is actually scary like it's what not if, a scary movie but to me like something that can actually happen oh that's Gerard butler one uh i don't know what it's, is, uh, it's, it's called greenland and it's about like hold on let me look this up yes great where the family everything gets orange yeah okay yes that was a great movie I want to see that. So, Gerard Butler did a movie. Oh, uh, which one? Uh, do, 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 do. Where is he? Gerard Butler. I know that movie was out. Yeah. Well, I think I I got it. I don't. How did I watch it? I, my dad had pulled it up on something, and we all watched it. But that movie was. To me, that's a scary movie because that's something that can happen in real life. Oh, yeah. It's like watching Contagion. Yeah, like that's scary. He did a movie where it's very similar to that, but it's not done very serious. Mm. I love it, though. It's called it's it's, it's called like Geostorm. Country. Geostorm. Oh, Geostorm. That's where they can like literally change. Like, yes. The it's My not dad, a great I movie. Like- I loved it. I, I was in the hospital. My wife was in the hospital when our child was, uh, uh, I think she, we were thought maybe the, she was about to arrive. We were at the yeah. hospital and we were watching this movie and I'm just, gl- I'm just glued to it. Uh, I'm like, this movie is so ridiculous. I love it. Yeah. I, I, it, I was, I was like, I want to buy this movie. 
Like that. <laughs> yeah, I remember my dad was watching it, and he was like, "Yo, Nate, you have to watch this movie. It's super cool, super cool." And I think I just remember telling him, "Like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch it." Never got around to watching it. Dude, you have but to I see heard it. Heard that it was really cool though. So it I is. Might- a, it's a really. It, it, the idea behind it is so it's directed by one of the writers of Independence Day and God and the original Godzilla from the '90s. You know, he did a lot of movies with him. Uh-huh. So he was telling his son a bedtime story, and this was, this is, and this is the movie. Mm-hmm. This is the, his son even has a credit. Oh wow! His little his his son. So it's uh, again, it's not an Academy Award winning movie. Uh-huh. but it's a disaster film yeah you know and i love like day after tomorrow mm-hmm. you know i love disaster movies so it's again it's not like a great movie that can be an academy award winner and stuff yeah, like yeah, that yeah. but i category, it's a good movie yeah. oh my god if you want a good just popcorn film on a saturday uh-huh. and you, just, you just want to sit back and enjoy a movie boom pop it in I'm definitely going to watch that. And I think that's what Greenland was kind of like, too. Definitely. Yeah, that's his big thing. He loves doing those disaster movies. He's doing another uh, Fallen oh. movie. Guardian. I think it's called Guardian Has Fallen. Oh, yeah. I don't know. What is, <laughs> yeah, he's doing another, like, you know, Angel. You know, he did um, Olympus, London, Angel Has Fallen. And then, yeah, he's doing a, he's doing another one. Yeah, there's a lot night, of night has fallen. That's what's called night has fallen. Oh, okay. Hey, he, he, he one of the guys like he loves doing those movies. Like, yeah, I'll do it. Let me see. I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, Butler. Sure. I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, but you know what? I mean, you're an actor, you know, and if yeah. a script, if a script, you know, I never dog actors mm-hmm. for doing a commercial or you know certain roles because in the, the day you know you read the script and if you like the script and someone's willing to give you a paycheck to be yeah. in that movie that you enjoy doing yeah i mean i mean i what's wrong with that you know yeah, exactly. i mean if you're that's your job i mean you get it yeah. it's your job exactly and you, you know, know as an actor if you've had fun doing it there you go exactly you know and that's what acting should be you know if you're an actor you should have fun acting you shouldn't you know ever be in this industry if it's not something you want to do like me i love to act you know yeah it's something i've always done since i was little i feel like even without me recognizing it i was acting in a yeah way. you know so it's something i love to do and it's something i want to do you know what i'm saying well so, look at look at samuel jackson you know, i mean he he does movies like that he wants to see exactly you know like like robocop you're like why would sam jack be in robocop because he loves robocop exactly. and, and he wants to be in a robocop movie yeah for sure you know yeah. you look at, when he does those priceline commercials they're great you know who directs all those priceline commercials no spike lee oh wow <laughs> yeah yeah i think every actually you know everyone he does spike lee directs oh wow i didn't yeah. know that and the last wow. one he did had john travolta in it and he was wearing, and Samuel Jackson was wearing a shirt that said "Merry Christmas" was cheese, <laughs> like from Pulp from Pulp Fiction. Uh-huh. And you know, and then look at um, J.K. Simmons. You know, from you know, he was J. Jonah Jameson in Spider Man. Mm-hmm. You know, he won an Oscar for you know uh, Whiplash. He still oh, does the farmer commercials. Cool. He's still the voice for the yellow M M&M. and M. Why? Yeah. Because that's what he enjoys doing. Exactly you know and it's like that's those are two staple kind of like like everybody knows those two characters. exactly yeah those and they're in everything they're yeah. those two are making like three movies a year exactly you know <laughs> for real and the same thing same thing with nicholas cage you know i mean i know he owes people a lot of money because he's broke and stuff like that but yeah. he loves to make movies yeah this is his job thanks you know that's what it and that's what it should be like literally, like if, if you want to act, you know, and this is something you love to do, you should have fun doing what you want to do and you should do what you want to do. Like, you know, as an actor, yeah. I get all types of auditions, you know, like yeah. sometimes I get auditions. I'm like, huh? You know, yeah. it's like, this is not me. You know what I'm saying? Like, exactly. This is not something that I would find myself enjoying. Like, and sometimes I could, you know, like I could care less about how much it pays at the end of the day. It's something that if it's not something I want to do, 
you know, I'm yeah. not going to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So definitely exactly. I always want to do something that I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and uh, that's a great position that you're in. Yeah. And that's, why, that's another reason why I love acting. <laughs> it's like, it's, I can, I, I'm kind of my own boss at yeah. the end of the day. You know what I mean? Cause it's yeah. like, if I don't want to do something, you know, I don't have to, you know yeah. what I mean? Well, I'm like, yeah, look at Will Smith. I mean, he had two choices play Deadshot, this new character that's never been adapted to the movie before, or going back and playing this role exactly. in Independence Day that he may not have thought the script was ready yet. And he took a chance as well. And I personally thought that, uh, you know, it he did a It was probably the better role, because now, when I think of Deadshot, I do think of Will Smith, which is, yeah. so that's good. Yeah. I mean, that's what you, that's really your ultimate goal. You want to... That's why I'm glad they didn't recast him with uh, Idris Elba. You know, yeah. they gave Idris his own character, which I'm like, okay, uh, I like that. Yeah, I like that. He played the um, he played the the guy at, in, from yeah, Thor. Yeah, uh, he Heimdale or something like that. Yeah, and Thor, he was the one that controlled. Yeah, the, the guy the, with the sword, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I heard, I think he's gonna be in Loki too. I think he's gonna be in Loki. Oh, as he well. probably will make an appearance in Loki. And Loki, I like Loki as a character. He's probably one of my favorite villains. I don't know. Is I he know, right? It's very he interesting. A, yeah, he's kind very of interesting. both the fields in a way. And that's why I like him as a character as well, because you never know what he's going to do. He always well, that's, that's why I think the Loki show is going to be very interesting. Like, yes, how they're going to twist. Well, they're going to make yeah. him. Is he going to be kind of like the, you know, the uh, anti hero in a way? Yeah. Or it's or, like, uh, I, I feel like it's going to be like he doesn't have a choice but to be the hero. Like, it's like he doesn't want, I feel like he's going to not want to make like do the hero like thing but has doesn't have a choice i think that's going to be the situation he's put in exactly mm -hmm. well i think so yeah I, i'm i'm super excited that's one of the shows i'm like okay yeah yeah when Loki. when's 2020 when's, where's 2021 i'll accept that <laughs> yeah, and the, guy played, the guy who plays loki again i'm bad with me uh tom hiddleston tom hiddleston <laughs> He, I, I love him as Loki. And that's another guy who will play Loki until, yeah, you know. I love him as Loki. He's perfect Loki. Like, this, there's really have been MCU characters where I'm just, like, perfect. Like, like I wouldn't, I couldn't see anybody else playing this role. And he's definitely one of them. Oh, yeah, perfect. Well, Nate, uh, it's getting close to that, to that hour, to the oh, end. Yep, yep, hey, yep. man, this has been a great. I love yep. talking that's nerdy cool. stuff. I mean, oh. My, uh, I, you know, my wife is like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. You know, she, she, you know, she has her own nerdy stuff that she liked, but half stuff she's like, I, I don't know. Spider-Man, who, what? Who, what? <laughs> so true. it's so cool to sit down and talk with someone who knows what they're talking, knows cool what they're you. talking about, you yes. know? And again, I think you should be in one of these. Man, Either DC... You know, or or MCU. You any, know, I'll take anyone I can get. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, hey, if they make a Batman Beyond movie, man. Oh, that would be cool. You, you know? Never know what they could do with that. You know, so the possibility. I mean, you're, uh, you're you're an industry that is ever growing. Your career is ever growing. You know, when I told my wife, so I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna be sitting down with Nate, and she goes, he's gonna he's gonna be big. He's going uh, places. Man, thank he's, you so much. He's I going places. That. So. This has been this has been awesome. I had so much fun here. I mean, I uh, wh why don't you tell people where they can find you? You know, got anything coming up? You want anything you want to promote? You know, here's the time. Do it, man. <laughs> hey, I'm Nathaniel McIntyre. Um, I uh, you can find me on HBO Max uh, in David in David Makes Man playing Saren. Uh, you can find me on Disney Plus uh, in Magic Camp playing Theo, and you can follow me on Instagram at the Nate McIntyre. <laughs> Boom. Awesome. Well, well, Nate, thank you so much. Tell your mom thank you. Awesome, awesome. I will. And uh, we're definitely gonna have to do this again because there's gonna be For more sure. news popping up. Oh more yeah, more news popping. You're you're gonna be our resident uh, pop culture person now. Oh, awesome, cool. I like <laughs> I like uh, I have fun here talking about all these things for sure, for sure. And I'm gonna catch up in my encyclopedias on all my characters and all everything I need to know. Yeah, um, man, man, me too. I'm I'm gonna. I'm going to look out for Disney Plus when they drop all those Marvel shows. And once they drop, that's what we should do. Once they drop, we need to start doing some recap stuff. Yes. That's sure. what we need to start, start dropping, doing. Start watching and start, start <laughs> talking about it. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> Dope. There I'm we go, about. man. Well, hey, right. have a Merry Christmas. Have a Happy New Year's. Stay yep. safe. Have fun, man. Yep. And I will talk to you later. 
All right, see you. Good night. See you, man.